Greg Pickle, we're doing this. <laughs> we certainly are. Penn State is number two in the country after yep. a barrage <laughs> of upsets. They won't stop. A barrage of up. They will not stop. If you're if you're if you're taking your act on the road, uh, you better be ready to play. I mean, right. some really good teams uh, got it handed to them over the weekend. As a result, as a result, excuse me. Penn State is six and zero, coming off the bye week, getting ready to host. Big Ten East nemesis, Michigan. I say yep. nemesis because that's one of the few teams that James Franklin has yet to beat during his brief right. time here. 0-2. Uh, they lost 28-16 at Beaver Stadium to, to Michigan two years ago. Yep. And last year was the 49-10 game in Ann Arbor. A lot's changed since that game. Um, Penn State is a, depending <laughs> depending on when you look, you hit your internet refresh button. Right. You'll get a different number on this game. Penn State, as we talk about it right now, you're telling me they're just a nine-point favorite. Correct. Yep. After opening as a 12 and a half point favorite, the you total started around 42, it's on and the now move. it's up to 45. It's on the move. I, I don't understand it, Bob. I really do not. If you would have told me mm-hmm. that Penn State would yep. be around 10, okay, I could have seen that. Yep. But for the total to go up, this is two. This is a matchup between two very good defenses. Yeah. And a Michigan offense that's fairly inept, and a Penn State offense that does average 40 points a game, fairly but inept. has notable blocking problems. Yeah. And they're getting ready to face maybe the one of the best, obviously one of the best defensive lines in the yeah. country, and also in the Big Ten. So you just don't see the uh, chance for points. Unless you're looking at defensive scoring, and I guess yeah. that's maybe where this number's coming from. I ain't really given too much thought to where the points are going to come from, but I did pick Penn State because of where they aren't going <clears> to <throat> come from, and that's because that's Michigan's offense. I will probably end up being wrong about this, but I'm just telling you, every time I pile on, I end up being wrong. Yeah. So I might as well just stop there. But the point is, is that Michigan, if you watched in the last two weeks, okay, maybe you throw out the monsoon game, or most of it anyway, against right. Michigan State. But last week against Indiana, I just was not impressed. And Indiana defense didn't suddenly get great in a few weeks between the time Penn State played them and the time Michigan did. So I got a Penn State 21 at Michigan 10. Uh, I think the Lions are able to you know, cover if it's under 10. If it goes back to 12, I'm yeah. be a little bit a little more leery. And well, I guess we'll see where it closes, but I'm pretty set on the under at this point. So what say you? Well, I know a couple things before I get to my official score, because I know there's a lot of people nationwide that are just <laughs> waiting, probably in Vegas, yeah. or waiting They're for on, this number. On jetways, getting ready to go to Vegas. We have right. been to date, Greg. We have been good at identifying the winner right. in games. But, but nowhere close. The, the, the most interesting thing to me from a handicapping or, let's just say, gambling uh perspective with Penn State is this is a team that I think went over the total right 11 of 14 games and they could have easily been 12 of 14 yep uh, it has not been the case I think it's just once the game's gone over yep. once out of six games and the reason is because I think Penn State's defense and special teams correct whereas last year they had to win shootouts because their defense and their kicking game they just weren't quite there yet right they had to, they had to score to overcome uh, all their issues on the defensive side. This time they're more complete yep. and they get up early and the defense and special teams just kind of takes it from there. So right. it's interesting just to see how this team has become more complete. But last year, if you were if you were wise enough to, to, to bet on shootouts, you were rewarded. Right. This year, I think it's the other way. And you're talking about the game going under 45. And I mean, that's, I think, where the smart money probably should be. I have it 23-10, Penn State. The one thing I'll be looking for is, you know, Penn State's outscored team 76 nothing, I believe, in the first quarter. Something like that. Complete lines, yeah. reversal from last year when they, I think they only scored 68 points or 66 points all of last year in the first quarter. Michigan is a team, Greg, that if they have to come from behind yeah, how? and you force O'Corn to throw the ball, it just does not add up. You saw what happened in the Michigan State game. He just could not do it. The way that Michigan wins the game or stays in the game is if they can somehow play with the lead yep. and then cause some matchup problems for Penn State's offense. Hope maybe they don't they get their B or C game from the special teams. But if Penn State continues the trend of doing well early in games or playing from ahead, it does not look like Michigan is the team with the offense that's going to upset Penn State. So we'll see. But, I mean, that's two, a couple things I think to watch for is how is Penn State going to start and what happens if, if Michigan gets behind at all. Right. Like, what are they going to be able to do uh, in the whiteout crowd uh, you know, kind of yelling in their ears that really yep. short circuited. I thought Ohio State last year, twenty one ten for you. Yep, twenty three ten for me. Penn State. All right, and we will now take some look at some uh, some picks from our staff.